All right, everybody, thank you all for joining. This is Nico from Unicorn Riot. Sorry, uh, the stream went down. We had a battery run out on us. Stream back up. The bad thing about it was that I don't know if you all caught the last interviews that we had, which were incredible interviews with some youth. Um, if you did not catch it, we will definitely get that in HD uploaded someday soon. Um, all of the power is out in like all of this neighborhood. Uh, some of Unicorn Riot members live around here. It might be hard for electricity to be had. So we might not, we might have a delay on some of the videos come out. We had a delay on the videos coming out yesterday as the electricity was cut off. Uh, it's, it's, it gets complicated to try to cover an uprising when you don't have electricity in your house to, in your apartment to, uh, to do the work you're trying to do. Again, thank you all for your support out there and for watching and for viewing. That is a USPS truck that's on fire. That is the third truck or van, I should say, that is on fire that we've seen in this two block, in a one block radius, essentially. Uh, one block away from us is also the USPS station on 31st and Minnehaha. And that's just literally right up the street, right there, another block. So people have, ex uh, people have taken, stole the USPS trucks, the vans, and have used them, rolled them around the city. Who knows where other ones are. And three of them are now getting burnt up. This neighborhood is absolutely demolished. Demolished. Yesterday, actually, so while we're right here, boom, we see that. This is where we were watching that massive fire yesterday with the condos. That, that massive fire was right there in the darkness. That condo is not there anymore. some of the battery stuff so again that is a USPS truck United States Postal Service which in general we heard a youth just saying it's it represents government property burn all the government property down and then we'll start to figure out how to build something new um, at the same time the USPS does deliver goods for people and deliver uh, postage uh, shipping Envelopes and families sending stuff to families. And so that's the one shitty thing. But again, when it comes down to it, there's reasons. And those reasons are centuries deep. We heard youth just talking about generational trauma in much more succinct ways than I was. And I'm not sure that, that part might not have hit the hit the live stream. I'm not sure when it went out. But again, like I said, we'll, we'll try to recap you on that. Uh, this is a very hot fire now. It's definitely, definitely warming us up. A lot of people have left. There's not thousands and thousands in the streets right here. Um, but there's still probably... That was just gunshots in the air. What's that? Gunshot was a skateboarder. Yeah, yeah. He's on a skateboard, popping it off. I've seen a lot of guns out here tonight, the night before, the night before that. That was more gunshots. That was more gunshots. I don't know who these guys are. You all want to say anything at all?
Say anything to the to the stream? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Why not? Hey, folks. This is Jen. I'm out here. Uh, you've heard my voice over the past couple of days. Uh, what? Two in the morning now? We got this this car burning behind us, a USPS vehicle. The third one burning I've seen tonight. The other one back in the intersection of Minnehaha and Lake, right across from the third precincts. Well, we're receiving reports that there's a, another car burning across from the street from the 4th precinct right now in North Minneapolis. If you recall back in 2016, four years ago, five years ago, yeah, 2015, my bad. Uh, that was when Jamar Clark was killed by members of Minneapolis police uh, that were employed by the 4th fourth, uh, fourth precinct there. So uprising is happening all over Minneapolis tonight. I've been, I've been hearing about stuff happening in Uptown, which is uh, so, a little bit west and south of here for people that are not familiar with the Twin Cities. Earlier in the day, I was in St. Paul, the other of the two Twin Cities. The The target that's behind us right now got uh, looted the first night of protests. And today is day three of the protests. Uh, earlier over the St. Paul Police Department, and Roseville police, as well as Minneapolis police, were over there in, in Midway area of St. Paul defending that target. And a bunch of other buildings were smashed up around the area, a bunch of other businesses, uh, mostly chain businesses or uh, sort of area Midwest chain businesses. Like there's a, a Lee Chin, there's a vitamin shop, Verizon, which is everywhere. Um, but that was a few, that was like around 4 or 5 p.m. and then came down here to Minneapolis. Things are much farther along than they were two days ago when I was down here. Even yesterday when I came down here, there was not this level of just destruction around the neighborhood. The burned out auto zone behind us was, that that was present the other day, but all this stuff around us is new. I came here, I came here today earlier and the the third precinct behind us was on fire. Now it's mostly smoke. Uh, the, the upper layer was burning earlier. We caught some uh, dark smoke coming out of a tall window when we were interviewing somebody. Uh, the, uh, behind, uh, the block behind there is an Arby's. A little while ago we heard people cheering as the roof kind of finally crashed down after the whole building being on fire for a while. A lot of, the smell of smoke is heavy in the air. Uh, it's kind of, your eyes are burning a little bit because the smoke is everywhere. There's a lot of nasty stuff burning, I'm sure, in these cars, in these buildings that you're not supposed to breathe in. But, you know, that's that's how it is when you have buildings getting set on fire. Actually, this car behind us, you can't, you might not be able to see it, but it's putting out a ton of really dark smoke. And actually, like, the whole, the whole Lake Street down there, this is a very, very pop, uh, popular street. There's no traffic right now, obviously, but also all the street lights are out and the, the black smoke is darkening the sky. You see some signs on businesses like that have been boarded up that say this is a, this is a POC owned business. Hey, don't burn this building. People live here. So people are being somewhat con uh, conscious of the destruction that's taking place. So, <laughs> Got a little scuffle happening here behind us. We haven't have spray painting on the ground here. Are we loud enough? Is what it says right where we're standing on the ground. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to us tonight. This is the yeah, like I said, this is the third third day of protests, the uprising here in Minneapolis. And yeah, really, really grateful for everyone that is watching right now. Everyone that's given us some support in the past, that's given us support recently. New supporters, new viewers. Hi, we, we gained over 20,000 followers on Twitter in the last two days. Uh, it's like a light breeze blowing right now. Wind sort of picked, uh, died down a little bit from earlier. In St. Paul, the wind was pretty... Uh, pretty bad. Or it was like 
pretty strong. We heard like, oh, what's up? You want to talk to us? We y'all on a recorder? Yeah, we're Unicorn Riot Media. Live right now, homie. Hey, so look, this is what happened, gang. This shit going crazy. Martin Luther King started all this shit, not this in general, but I'm saying he started the whole protest shit. You know, this shit happened because of the shit that happened to George Floyd. It could have happened a different way, but the shit, the silent, the silent protest ain't working out here. You got to be violent to get your point across. See that shit like that? They don't want to fuck with that. They're trying to be civil. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta show them what we really need in life and what we want. You know what I'm saying? Straight facts. Shout out to me. Thank you. What, what's y'all, what's y'all channel? Hey, we're Unicorn Riot. Check Unicorn out. Riot. You know we rocking. Uh, you on the news? Yeah, gang. <laughs> hey, so y'all just stay smooth. Don't come out here. It's too violent. You got kids. Just you know, tell them their little backstory. You know what I'm saying? Stay smooth out here. It's not safe. People shooting guns, fires. That whole bitch is burnt down. I was in that bitch before. Unicorn ride, stay smooth. <laughs> we heard from a member of a community just now. Yeah, that building is very burned up, that third precinct there. You know, there's, de there's sort of def defini definitions of the word violence. Some people use the word violence to mean, you know, burning things, smashing things. Other people use the word violence to mean harming another person. Burning a building, if there's nobody inside, is not necessarily harming another person physically. So some people don't use that word violence when describing property destruction. They only use it when uh, talking about harming living creatures, harming living beings. But I have, al I have also heard from other people, parents, they're trying not to bring their kids around here right now because this is not necessarily a kid-friendly environment. It's very startling, surprising, loud noises, unpleasant smells, toxic fumes. You know, I think you've, if you've been paying attention to our live stream, you, you have a pretty good idea of what's going on down here tonight. So, yeah. I might I might give you back here to Nico, have you have him be your host here for a while. But again, thanks thanks for tuning in and thank you to all the supporters who let us do what we do out here in the streets. Support thank you for your support. Couldn't do this without you. Thanks, you just heard from Jen. Remember Unicorn Riot. This was. What up, what up? What up? This was a chiropractor office in a tobacco shop. Hey, what up? How you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm good. You want to talk at all? I mean, I'll give you a, a quick piece. Let me just. Uh... You can do it with no video, and we can no, just I'm do it. We can talk. Okay. We can talk. Let's talk in front of the burning, burning embers. Um, you were, I think I met you originally, Unicorn Ride originally saw you in, in the mansion, at the governor's mansion in Falano Castillo. It was 23 days of occupation outside the governor's mansion. Now it happened after people tried to go to the fourth precinct for Jamal Clark. They stepped it up to the governor's mansion. That really didn't even get any kind of semblance of justice. Yorana Moyanes was charged, not convicted, and nothing happened really. So what is your take on that compared to this? compared to where we are what's my take all right well i will say um the only thing that is 100 percent um inevitable is change and uh things need to change i will say that um there's a lot of collateral damage that people should be aware of and think about i mean this is where people receive their services. This is where people get their groceries. These are where small businesses are. You know what I mean? Like, when you talk about we're in the middle of a pandemic currently, and you got open flames, you got smoke, you got carcinogens, you got all of this shit during the middle of a respiratory fucking pandemic, and who are the people that are gonna be most affected by this? It's not gonna be the people sitting out in fucking Oakdale it's not going to be where the officers live, you know, affected by this. You got young black and brown bodies, little children and shit who can't leave this area. Many people who don't got cars can't fucking evacuate. You got toxic fumes spilling out in the everywhere, you know. I mean, there's really no kind of organization to this shit. I understand chaos, man, you know. But realistically, don't cut your own supply lines. And don't poison your own food and water supply, let alone air supply. 
So, I mean, if this shit's gonna be a longevity situation, you gotta think about this shit for the long haul. Where you gonna eat? What you gonna breathe? If your neighborhood's burning, where the fuck you gonna be at? Don't burn your own fucking neighborhood, man. I mean, this corporate shit, this police station, that's a casualty of war that they created, man. But the rest of that, the civilian shit, man, these, these small businesses, man, these people don't deserve this shit, man. There's, there's a lot of people with families that can't move out of here, man. So just be careful about what you're burning, where you're looting. You know, other shit is uh, much more prime for that, man. Don't destroy where you live, man. Don't shit where you sleep. Um, you know, for all you youth out here and all you, you know, real life organizers out here holding some shit down, stay safe. You know, stick with the people that you know and you trust. Everybody ain't to be trusted. Um, you know, motherfuckers is around here real fucking provocateur on some antagonistic shit, you know, leading motherfuckers to the fucking slaughter. So just be careful of who the fuck you see doing what, man. And if you buy somewhere and somebody's trying to, you know, get into a fucking business that you shop with, that you, you know, that you respect and love the people of, man, say something to somebody, man. Stop that shit, man. You know, like... Hey, I got a hundred dollar bottle for 50. But, you know, other than that, stay safe, survive, fight the power how you see fit. And hey, I'm with you in solidarity 100%, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. Much love, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. You see this? You're good. One more second, y'all. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, y'all. Any of these people are here, don't get us, okay? Okay, got you, got you. Yep, yep. Yo, get these white people right here, man, so they get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Put them right there, man. What's your address, man? 
What's your address? What's your address? Me? I'm not doing anything. I'm trying to trade my card, man. What's your address, man? Honestly, what's my address? It's legitimate. Shut the fuck up out of my face. Why are you even starting any? Go over there, because if I shoot this motherfucker, I'm in the one no need. I don't want to fucking with you. Get in the car so I can get the put that shit in dry so I shoot this motherfucker. We just get the fuck out of here. Don't shoot him, man. You're walking up to me. Bro, I don't give a fuck. This is chaos. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck. This is my hood. This is my hood, bitch. Where do you live, bro? I live here. I live fucking here. We ain't fighting, bro. If you you should know, I I used to wreck this shit out, bro. Go fucking look at the fucking face from everywhere. See who I am. See my look at my face. Look at my face. I don't give a fuck. Why are you hiding in your shit? Look at my face. Why are you hiding? You're hiding. Fuck work, tomorrow, bitch! Man. I don't have no work tomorrow. Well, I do, man. I don't well, fuck you. Public school I have business. nothing to luck and go for tomorrow. What? Yeah, nigga. I gotta go so back that's to me, then. Get the fuck out of my face, then. Uh, Deal yeah. with kids. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm so close to fucking doing you. Mm. Mm. Oh, I'll do with the oh, fucking oh, future, oh, man. Oh, 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 no. Oh, the shoulders. I'm not gonna do you. I'm not gonna do you. But I'm gonna do you with this bottle, bitch. Don't do that, please. Come on. We need to go that way, bro. Go that way. I haven't used the help. I'm the real enemy. I have not moved at all. You want a cigarette, bro? Can I give you some cigarettes, bro? I just want to do stop hiding. He's not gonna hide. I'm not hiding. I'm not hiding right here, bro. I'm not hiding. I'm not hiding. You gotta head out. You gotta head out. Remember who the real enemy is. This you're right though, girl. you're right though. When he walked up on my girl, walking, right. this guy walked up on me. Right. So, once you start walking up three people, you become the enemy. Honestly. Bro, we were not trying to do nothing. We video this. This is why I work at. Now we video this shit, and you over here talking about who the fuck is you. Get the fuck out of here, bro. That's what he said to you? Yeah, I had nothing to do with you. We not, and he wanted to her and him and me. So how are you going to talk to him and start taking it? It's, it's a, it's a, we had nothing to do with it, bro. Not you, him. Yo. Why are you not checking everybody else? Yeah, we together, bro. All of a sudden, you checking good. us. We good. We good. We good. We good. Well, let's just leave it alone. Oh, yeah. Who's together, bro? I'm just leaving it alone, man. Bro, I have to Sorry about all this difficulty. But I'm not going to get shit. I love you too, bro. I'm not getting shit. I feel for you, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Bro, I'm mad. It looks like a part of our camera. Everybody's mad. But I have nothing against you. But everybody's mad. Not attaching, right? Somebody's mad. I'm some bullshit, bro. Have your business. The shitty thing is, Gandhi Mahal got got. All right, one more thing. Sorry again, y'all. It's a uh, it's a problem right now with our camera getting attached to the rig. Sorry about that. This camera rig is messed up now. Somehow. Give me one more minute. Let's try to get it on.
mess. What a mess, I'm sorry, y'all. I was trying to fix my equipment. Check, check. I apologize about that five minute excursion of madness. Sorry about all that little quickness, that, or that long time that took. We had difficulties with some of this equipment. I had difficulties with some of this equipment. Acting like a rookie out here. This is what the liquor store looks like. There was an elder who said earlier that possibly somebody was down in the basement of this liquor store. So I, ho I really, really hope that that's not true. I hope that we're not looking at the roof that has collapsed onto somebody. But this is the liquor store. It's done for. Wow. This is a vintage sign. This is the drive through sign. Wow. People are getting a little bit more belligerent out here. We were, when we were trying to transfer over, when we were transferring over the the rig, we were sitting next to a few people who almost fought. It's got to that level of frustration for people. Mostly, we've seen people be peaceful towards their own kind towards the community that's out here. <laughs> Unicorn Riot. What? Unicorn Riot. Unicorn Riot? Yeah, check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Vimeo. And our, our website is unicornride.ninja. No, I'm not seeing it. Yep, yep, you want to speak? How you feeling out here? Man, I'm having fun out here, bro. This shit is for George. Tell him. Oh, uh, you see all these people out here? They're breaking everything. And they're doing it for a reason. Yo, the cops, I saw them, I went downtown, right? I saw all the cops. They're gone, they're all downtown. Their cars are all broken and shit, they're gone. They're not around here. And they're not coming back. You can, yep, what's up? Fuck the police, justice for George. Um, we're, we're out here for him. Oh, yeah. We're out here for him, bro. We're supporting him. We're gonna tear this shit off for him. Yeah. Okay, that's all I gotta Hell, say. Yeah. That's all you Thank you, appreciate it. Saw you. What's up, bro? I just want to tell y'all niggas, this is strike three. It's already happened. The first time, it should have happened. The second time, it should have happened. The third time, it's out, nigga. Now we going to Calvin's house, and we going to choke that nigga out, too. We going to fuck y'all up. Fuck them all up. Matter of fact, we got a two-for-one rule, nigga. One of ours, two of yours. Innocent motherfuckers dying, because y'all bitch-ass niggas don't want none. There's more of us than you, bitch. What's up? Exactly. We coming for y'all niggas. This is only the beginning, motherfucker. What's up? Huh? Exactly. You speechless, bitch. Because next time, this is your motherfucking house out there in Oakville. 
fuck you, bitch. You don't live here. But we coming to your fucking house right now, nigga. The fuck out my face. Here you go, bro. Talk Fuck 12, man. It's as simple as that. Fuck 12. Y'all wanna speak it off? You don't have to. Fuck these bitches. It's fuck 12. They killed an innocent man for no motherfucking reason. Matter of fact, not just one. It's four of them motherfuckers on one innocent black man. He came to Minnesota to change his life, and this is the fucking thanks he get though. So it's fuck 12. We gonna purge. It's fuck 12. He ain't do shit to nobody. Not to a fucking soul. But he still got his life taken. For what? It's fuck him. Fuck 12. Um, if you all can bear with me for like five minutes, what I'm gonna do is format this card so I can get in. Oh, you know what? I can't format this card. Never mind. Um, they're both the same cards and I don't know which one is which. So. Right here, I hear a third precinct. I, I, I do see a lot of shots being shot. Seen video of a vehicle group earlier. Somebody says, "Yeah, that's a lot of shots." It's been a constant all night. Um, I, I just read that possibly military trucks are headed this way to try to take the street again. I don't know. I don't know how much. It might be true on the level of there's much less people here now. I'm gonna talk it all real quick before you go. Hey, what you wanna hear? My nigga right here. Any... White lives matter, man. Fuck it. <laughs> White lives mic. matter. You Grab know what I'm mic. talking about. Grab a mic. Man, that's... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, th I think you. Go through here. Hold on. Thank you heard what the fuck up. I said. And let me tell you. Can I grab? It's us versus them. Right and we ain't giving up. They ain't taking us again. We ain't tell losing me. again. Let me tell you just like this. Thank God all of the Minnesota people came here together together today. Let me tell you, bro. It's all we we all we got. And I love Minnesota standing together. They're not gonna keep hurting us like this anymore. We ain't gonna lose no more people. Right. Powder well, we people, ain't. man. That's all I gotta say. No, we ain't. Thank you all. Stay safe, baby. Stay safe. Everyone's safe. Stay safe. Let's get out of here. Hey, let's get out of here. Hey, though. We gotta go. 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 Hey, though. We gotta go.
There goes that building. I think that was El Nuevo Rodeo. I know the car is full. Uh -huh. Sorry that you are getting the car full. Sign. Give me a minute. I'm going to try to figure out. Uh, I hope you all aren't seeing like the R sign that comes up. This is the, the struggle sometimes of having like one hand available to do anything. And try to communicate with your squad with the one hand you have on the phone. Thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, can I say hi to somebody? Totally. Hi, Nathan. Hold on. Let me oh, uh, put sorry. some light on. Sure. There we go. Hi, Nathan. How are you doing this evening? What brought you out? You know, I live in the neighborhood, and I just want to make sure my neighborhood's safe, and I'll be out here cleaning up tomorrow. So, thank, thank you. you. This is like the third group of strange white folks. Trying to do boogaloo shit. Hey man, yo, I like it's reality. White folks that are not down for the cause are out here. Um, very reminiscent of Julio Suarez and Alan Scarcella. Scarcella came with Julio and another a couple of folks during 2015 Jamar Clark uprising. Scarcella and Julio came and found me streaming and said, oh, it's Unicorn, what's up, Unicorn? We only came out here because of you. And two days later, and they said, so then they said all this funny stuff that I didn't really understand. It was like weird talk. It was like fires rising and all this shit. I, ain't, I don't watch Batman. I don't know what you're talking about. But I come to find out, all of what they were doing was some kind of 4chan memeing. They were white supremacists, and they came back and shot up the precinct. They shot five innocent, unarmed black folks that were protesting for justice for Jamar Clark, who was unarmed while he was shot in the face by police. Um, and Scarcella ended up getting 10 years in prison.
One second, I need to communicate some things. At least the tenth building that's been burnt. Okay. Yo, what up? What's up, my G? You too. Good? Yep. You I'm okay. I need to run and grab a card real quick. Hey, I got a spot. I got a spot close. Okay, word. Word, got gotcha. you. It's my skull liquor. Okay. Hey, I heard Hexagon got burnt up. I heard you. You got my number? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Okay. Appreciate you, man. If you need anything, bro, let me know. Thank you, man. Right, Appreciate bro. you. Stay easy. Yeah, yeah. I need to walk down the street to grab something real quick. One second, you all. Thanks for your patience during this late stream.
Sorry, y'all. I'm waiting right now. to change out some things. I'm, I apologize. I'm waiting for the card as well. I'm here on 28th and Lake Street. The sounds you're hearing of the library being smashed into. So much. Yeah, that, was, that was clutch. This thing keeps having difficulties too. Quite annoying. Like unscrewing it though? Yeah. Well, not, it's just not screwing. All right. All right. Turn it off. Appreciate you. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Jen. Yeah, yeah. Jen comes, Jen comes through and saves you, Molly. <laughs> Thank you. for the last few minutes, y'all. Huh? Thank you. 
support squad, could you let me know if the audio is good? Thank you for Thank you for everybody that's been helping from the Unicorn Rouse squad in the back end. Thank you for all you've been tuning in. Getting information that there's military truck stage on the 22nd. We're going to walk down there. Precinct. There's a third precinct, third precinct police station here in Minneapolis. About a decade ago, it was built as they shut down five schools to build it to allocate that money. More shots behind us. Target parking lot is still massively packed. is gone. Wendy's and AutoZone burnt up yesterday. Arby's burnt up today. Police precinct we just saw a little bit on fire. The sprinkler system in there stopped the other fires. I'm going to try to walk up to where there's possibly some kind of military Trucks up the street. This is our least. It's getting a little late. We're going to walk down here to the See if we can find these military police. It looks like there might be a staging area up here, from what we're understanding. So if there's a structure fire in the back of Target. Oh, 
Again, this is a this is rage by the community, by the youth mostly. I'll show you all some of this fresh graffiti down there too. Medics moving around. This is Hiawatha Lake. Outside, we outside. Love is greater than fear. Dang, Metro Transit got all its bus, uh, got all its windows smashed. This is Metro Transit station. Y'all want to talk? Talk, yeah. What's up? What, 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 how you feel about all this? I feel good about this. Yeah? Oh, fuck yeah. well. Fuck them, man. They want to fucking... They want to sit there and kill people? Hell yeah. They, this is not right. This is right right here. This is what you get for killing motherfuckers for no reason. He had no fucking chance. Army's down there now. Yeah, I was walking over there. How far are they? They're just probably like a block away. Okay, cool. They're, they're on blocking that side? it off, so we gotta go this way. Oh, uh, they're on that side of it? They're right there. There's a bunch oh, of armies. Cool. Okay, thank you. Yep. They're right there. Okay. What up? I'm Dan's friend, Steve. Hey, what's up, Steve? How did you doing? Uh, did he mention me? Uh, maybe. I haven't been able to look at stuff <laughs> at all. A, you need a memory card? Oh, sweet. Appreciate that. No, I actually just got one. There you go. Yeah. Go, man, that's so dope of you. Thank All you right. so much, cool, Steve. Man. Yeah, I was just down the street. So. Yeah. yeah, there's like National Guard or something down here. So. Okay, I'm, let's go. I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. That was super yeah. nice. Yeah. I had one that, that needed to be formatted, uh, and that format process takes like you know three minutes or something. Yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to bring the screen down for that, let people sit for three minutes, and not have anything. There's a big fire back there as well. Yeah, sure. the, uh, the eight hour block down here, that sucker was on fire a lot. I think they may have put it out. Wow. This is all glass, broken glass. Broken glass everywhere up here. This is that rage that people are feeling. We see military trucks up here. Go we'll check it out. Hennepin County Human Services building smashed up with alarm going off. Again, apologies for this latest stream with all the, the few minutes of difficulties a few times. <laughs> Glad we're all good. This uh, great person named Steve just came over to give us a, a needed SD card. We did already get one. We did figure it out. This is a pharmacy ransacked. So that means for people who need pharmaceutical goods, it might be a uh, Probably. We have a person down here. Down. I'm not sure what happens to me. Open space.
Here's our first look at the National Guard. They shut down this whole street right here. Thank you for saying it. Yep, yep. I won't get you. Thank you. It's another little mall. How they think we got ransacked. Little Caesars. The sign says free pizza forever. Oh, oh my goodness, you want to talk? Okay. Miss Kim Handy Jones has made her way from Chicago, Illinois, or Illinois in general. I, I, I'll stand right here and you can stand like in front of these guys so the people can see what has happened here now. Um, so Kim Handy is, Kim Handy Jones, the mother of Cordell Handy. Cordell Handy, you want to talk about what kind of a man your son was before he was stolen by the St. Paul Police Department? He was a gift. He was a gift from God. My son would take the shirt off his back and give it to a person. He was very passionate, loving, caring. And he was here during the time when Philando Castile got killed by uh, Officer Yanez. He was the one called and told me because Philando got killed on my birthday. And so my son was very passionate about that. And uh, who would have ever thought that the 
same would happen to him. So, you know, when we, we think about our kids and what's going on in the world, am I shocked by this? No. No, I think this was the straw that broke the camel's back. I really, I mean, it was next door to first. It was next door to first. Minnesota was right next door to first. You know, and when you go back and you think about all the stolen lives that was taken and have been taken and continuously have been taken, it's just a, a accumulation of the things before and the things that just happened on Memorial Day. I mean, Memorial Day is a day we'll never forget. That's supposed to be the day we honor fallen soldiers, our lost loved ones. And for that to have happened to George Floyd, on a day we're supposed to honor the ones that's gone before us, and then to have to see someone life being choked out of them on a day we should be honoring people that already have gone before us. It's a day that we will always remember, but it's a day that Minnesota will never forget. I'm not shocked by this, but I want to, I want people to just really keep in mind the attention is really uh, being put on the looting. Let's not take the attention off of George Floyd, because that's what it's really about. It's about George Floyd, and it's and about all those George Floyds before George Floyd. That's what it's about, all stolen lives. But really, they're trying to talk about the looting. The news is doing it. The police are doing it. The, the officials are doing it. Oh, the looting, the looting, the looting. George Floyd is the face of what's going on here, along with the millions of faces that have left before George Floyd. And I knew when they killed my son, March 15, 2017, Cordell Handy, I knew then. I seen nothing good becoming of Minneapolis or St. Paul. And my son was killed in St. Paul by Miko Norman and Nathaniel Yance. These officers, they have no regard for human life. They think they're the judge, the jury, and the executioner. And they get to decide black and brown and indigenous people's lives, whether they get to live. And then they want to talk about a forged check. What does that warrant death? You had the man in handcuffs on his stomach. How was he being a threat? The only threat was the police. I didn't see the threat. He had already surrendered. All they had to do was pick him up, put him in the car. He sat there and he rested very comfortably on his neck with his hands in his pocket. And then we're in the midst of a pandemic and we were talking about COVID-19 and how it's killing people. COVID-19 wasn't even a threat to him because he surely didn't have on a mask. And then, was George Floyd threatening him? What was the threat? And that's what these officers holler. Oh, I felt threatened for my life. We've been talking about this, Nico. You and I now, going on three years. And from that year, 2017 to 2020, it didn't take long to get to where we at. Because you know why? Every second, our children Fuck and Taylor. our loved ones are dying. You're right. Fuck Twitter. That's exactly how I feel. And as uh, Jacob Fry said tonight, you know, mortar and brick, you can get that back again. It's not as important as a life. But why weren't they saying that again? And again and again and again before all this. As a black woman who's lost a son know that mortar and brick is not more important than the life and neither is a flag where is a flag more important than flesh and we're dying every day every day and the only difference is twin cities for a reason up here because they're definitely alike they just have different ways minneapolis they have 
the mindset of I'll kill black and brown people right in front of you and ain't a damn thing you can do about it. St. Paul, on the other hand, they'll throw a rock and hide their hand, but we see you too. They're all, they're both the same. Bottom line, it boils down to murder. It boils down to the execution of our loved ones. We can't keep doing this. We can't keep burying our kids. And now, the concern for the city, what was the concern for the citizens of the city? What was the concern? They didn't have one. Not one. I just want to urge people, and I want them to keep in the forefront of their minds that this is not about looting as they want to try to deflect it. Keep George Floyd in the forefront of your minds. I said to Chief Axtell before, there's a lot of good citizens here in Minnesota. I've been blessed to meet a lot of good ones. Family to me. But Minnesota had the opportunity to put a brand new face and show people what Minnesota could really look like. Instead, they kept that face of being deadly. They kept the face of not caring about what happened to the citizens, what happened to the community. And then to stand there on top of the third precinct and try to protect that building. What was George Floyd's protection? What was his protection? You got SWAT on top of buildings, police armed with batons. Where was the protection for George Floyd? Why bystanders tried to help him were hollering and screaming. What was his protection? They didn't care about his protection. Then you got the three blind mice sitting there with uh, Officer Chauvin, who turned their back. Who was down there by his legs. The first people thought it was two, but then it was four. So you got choked a black innocent man, Chauvin, and the three damn blind mice, who don't see nothing. Backs turned to him, because of course they don't want the body cams to pick up what they really doing to this black man. Minnesota better get it together. They better get it together. Because I'm gonna tell you something. For three years, it's always been back to business when they kill a black, brown, and indigenous person. But this is the business. This is the business of officers who think that they are above the law, who think that they can continuously kill their murderous motherfucking assholes. That's what they are. I have no compassion for them. I have no compassion for our city officials who sit back, don't say nothing, and when they do, they cover up. George Floyd murder cannot be covered up. They went too far. White lies and fuck blue allies. That's what I got to say. Mm. That's right. I'm going to go see you tomorrow. I love you. I love you too. See you. Thank you. Be safe. I am. I was texting you. Where you at? Where you at? Oh, uh, sure. I'm sorry. I haven't been able to look at my phone. I'll keep it back. Yeah, we're live. So we got the National Guard. National Guard here. That's good right there, isn't it? Yep. Oh, this is why. Wow. What was the National Guard when they was killing our people? Everyone. National Guard said, fuck us. Now y'all want to play Captain Save a Ho. You can't save these hoes. You can't save them. We couldn't save George Floyd. And we begged them to get up off that man's neck. We couldn't save him. These people are the minute. The minute. They fucking monsters. But now. When the shit come back and hit home, the chickens have come to roost. Yep. They've come to roost. And now they standing out here, want to save these hoes. These bullies with guns.
trying to save the third precinct. Third precinct gone. Sin don't live that no more. The murderous killers don't live that no more. The sin is gone. Which people in trouble, man? Yeah, it's sad. The soldiers are here. Yeah, they're here. And for what? What was the soldiers when our people needed to be saved? Where were they at? Then when people got real with them and decided, okay, we get ready to put boots on the damn ground. They still ain't shit. They're just standing there. Look at them. They're just standing there like little bitches. But when we hit them, they don't that know ain't, what to that's do. not boots on the ground. That ain't shit. Because boots on the ground is a is, is a, a a lifestyle. It's not a word, it's an action. They should have been in action a long time ago. So much blood has been spilled on the damn state of Minnesota. So much blood. They should have been here in the beginning. The first day they should have been here. Here with their damn trucks that I tax dollars pay for. And not one police would help George Floyd. Not one of them would say, get up off that man. Get off him. Not one of them would grab their fellow officer in the blue. Not one. And he looked at that, that, that officer had the face of like, yeah. I'm going to kill him, and I'm going I'm to I'm kneel on his neck and let you all watch me kill him. And that's exactly what he did. And that man was dead. He, he, wasn't, you know, he was dead before he even got to the hospital. He was dead on that ground. His body was lifeless. It was limp. And then when the citizens did, the bystanders did try to help. Right over here. The one cop. Can I get Push. a description of him? What is he wearing? Uh, there's a person on the ground. You'll see him. Okay. And mace. Yes, they, they tried to mace him. Oh, no. the, the bystanders watching. Yeah, why the bystanders watching and begging. Pleading them to stop killing them. <laughs> and they begging to save fucking brick and mortar. One thing about this brick and mortar, they not only have insurance, they have an assurance that they can get it all back. But when they kill our kids, I don't give a damn how much insurance you got. You can never get them back. If a black man, a black policeman, should have been kneeling on a white man, they would have pushed that black man off of him. But no, when a white man was on a black man, they didn't do shit. They didn't know. No, they want us to know that they are killing our people. That message was very loud and clear. And it ain't nothing that that officer said. It was everything that he did that made me know. George Floyd was to die that day. And they always come and approach us with the death sentence. And these officers, they take an oath to protect and serve. They only protecting their lives and they only serving our bodies with bullets. Where's the life in that? And then they're standing there last night with batons, standing on the front line. Hell, we've been standing on the front lines. With nothing but our black, brown, and indigenous bodies. And they're standing there with batons. You know what? They ought to be mad. They ought to be mad. They ought to be just as mad as us out here. But instead, they got their booties on because they boots damn sure ain't on the ground. But then when it comes back and one of their loved ones, something happened to one of their loved ones, and I don't wish death on anybody because I know too much what it feels like for myself. But you can't go around in life doing wrong. You just can't. I know why I don't sleep at night. Because Nico Norman and Nathaniel Yance stole the life of my child and executed my child. But they must not never rest. And they've been sleep on themselves. 
See, they got so comfortable they would sleep on themselves while everybody else woke. We sleep, all eyes closed, it's not sleep. We've been seeing over 400 years what they've been doing to our people and what they continue to do. I'm looking around, Nico, and I'm, I mean, these buildings, I was here Wednesday, these buildings were here, standing. But so was our children. So was our loved ones. So was our loved ones. They can get the buildings back. Get them back. Rebuild. New. But when you lost a loved one, you can't you can't get that back. No amounts of money. No insurance to bring it back. And the 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 real reality of it in life is I have, I have one. Oh, you have? Yeah, I don't. Minnesota okay, thank you. quit lying. Okay, Minnesota cops need to quit lying. And these city officials to stand behind them. And these prosecutors that protect them. Stop lying. Because this here today is the truth about all the lies and all the lives that they've taken. And then they want a relationship with the community. How could you ever get a relationship with the community based on what you do? Based on killing a man while bystanders are looking and while cops' backs are being turned as if they don't see it. And to me, they just as worse as he is. Not to say get up off that man's neck. They're worse than he is. All of them are murderous cops. I'll wait. I'll wait and, and you know, we'll see. We'll see. But you know what? Black people have always had to fight for what they want. Always. We gotta fight for our lives. I, you know. And, and, and of course, George Floyd's family should get what Justine got, but more. They should get more than Justine DeMond, because again, sight unseen. And all four of them cops, they don't even got the death penalty up here. But if they did, I wouldn't give it to them. I'd give them life. Let them nine or eight or nine minutes that that man couldn't breathe be a lifetime in a judicial system for them. Let them suffer. Nico. This, this here, this is a, a whole joke. A whole joke. Because why won't they hear what our people is done? National Guard. And all we trying to do is live. It's National Guard. There ain't nobody. All we trying to do is live. All we want to do is see our kids live. We want to see their full potential in life. We don't get to see that our kids are being sniped from us at every age. If they're not taking them, pulling them up, and putting them in foster care, they're killing them. It's a genocide on black, brown, and indigenous bodies. This shit here, you can build back up again. But you can't raise your kids or your loved ones from the dead. I love you. Love you too. Keep your boots on the ground. You too. Hey, if you want to tell the story of your son to Rod, I think Rod's live streaming right now too. I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is Kim Andy Jones. If you want to talk. Who is it? Uh, uh, he's just a friend in, in the corner, right? Yeah, oh, he's not Rod. Oh, you know, I don't let me tell you, I don't mess with everybody, honey. Yeah, he's not. I, I, I ain't being mean right. or nothing, but he's protected by me. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 not, I'm not corporate. Look, no, if he say you could, you could. This is uh, Kim Andy Jones, who you heard from, Kurt Handy's mother. She's created a community of mothers uh, uh, support system that helps mothers grieve through um, the situation of their youth being killed by the police. Um, Kim Andy Jones has created the In Remembrance of Me Foundation, which has provided gravestones, headstones for victims of police killings. This last March, Kim Andy Jones and In Remembrance of Me gave away nine, grave, nine headstones to, to victims of police killing and police terror. 
as well as community violence. I think there was a, a couple community violence folks there. If you want to know more about that, go into uh, Unicorn Riot Ninja. I think it's in the police tab. Or no, it's the community tab. So it's a community category. If you go to Unicorn Riot Ninja and our front page, you just scroll down a little bit. It's uh, something about community creating a collective grieving support system. I can't remember specifically what the article is called. But essentially what it does is it breaks down some of the implementers of new banquets and some of the realities of some of these uh, families are facing. She had brought 33 families, and this was before the coronavirus uh, stay-at-home orders, but right when the virus uh, was sort of starting to hit in, in March, and a lot of them didn't come, but she still had 33 family members, uh, or something like that, a few dozen. You know? So anyways, they all come together through King Handy and others and folks, and they, and they gather, and they grieve, and they spend the weekend together, and they speak, and it's, just, it's actually a really beautiful thing. Uh, Unicorn Ride has documented it for three years straight, and this last year we documented it as well. We're going to be having a mother's doc coming out soon on Unicorn Riot within the next year. Um, be prepared for that. It's going to be a documentary spotlighting mothers, spotlighting their stories, the pain, and how they turn that pain into power. Uh, this is Nico from Unicorn Riot. I am beat for the day. My back is tore up. I need to take the stream down. What's up? You want to say something? Life 74, they don't shoot me. Huh? Do they shoot me? No. Well, I'm standing right over there. They can't shoot me. No, probably not. They'll probably talk to you first. They seem more friendly than the police, to be honest. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who, all the new viewers, uh, Unicorn Rise is a 501c3 educational nonprofit. We bring context to social and environmental struggles and spotlight alternatives in today's world. We, uh, we've been around for five years. Those five years have been all viewer supported by you all, the viewers. So thank you all for being that for being the sustaining people that have created this independent media platform that we have. Thank you all for tuning in these last few days. We're going to continue to follow the events here in Minneapolis during the uprising of George Floyd as this uprising has reached the full capacity, uh, almost the full capacity, and moved around the country as well. And so the police precinct we saw today get smashed up and uh, entered and set on fire in multiple places. Um, that is only, this is, we've been streaming from only one spot, okay? Uh, these, like, 12 blocks on Lake Street. There's much more happening across the city. Derek Chauvin is the officer who killed George Floyd with the knee to the neck. Derek Chauvin is also killed before. He lives in Oakland, Oakdale, which is a St. Paul suburb. Him living there, people uh, put his name out on the internet, his information out on the internet, and people started gathering at his house a few days ago. And uh, I think are still consistently gathering out there, gathering at Mike Freeman's house. Um, not only at Mike Freeman's, they, the protesters and the community members um, expropriated a lot of goods from St. Paul in the Midway. Tons of buildings were smashed. A lot of things happen. Um, again, I'm gonna have to take the stream down. I am, I am deadbeat. Um, what you, who, who you heard just a minute ago again is Kim Handy Jones. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of content around her son Cordell Handy. We have a lot of content around police killings in general. So please continue to follow us. We try to bring the, the voice of the victims, the voice of the community, the voice of the, the leaders, the voice of the grassroots folks, the voice of anybody um, that is not represented fully in the mainstream media. And again, we would not be able to do this without your all support. What we saw today, tonight in Minneapolis was pretty historic. It'll be interesting to see what comes after this. And we will be here to follow it for you all and for us and to document it for the history books and allow the stories of the people to be told. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. We could not do this without you. If you have the financial privilege um, to support us, please do. We operate off of viewer supported funds. Thank you all that have donated so far. You can donate at unicornride.ninja. You can click on the five years uh, graphic or go to unicornride.ninja slash donate. We have multiple donation platforms. If you donate through our fundraiser, we'll be sure to get you a t-shirt, a five-year commemoration t-shirt of Unicorn Riot, we are five years deep. 
Other than that, we do have Patreon, we have Thunderbox, Stripe. Um, we have a lot of accepting ways to get money. Um, and if you don't have the financial privilege, that is totally cool. Watching our stream is dope. Thank you so much. Sharing our media and talking about it is even doper. So we really appreciate you all. We thank you all again. And we hope you all stay safe out here. We're going to take the stream down. Have a good night, you all. This is Nico. Thank you all for on the back end. We have Danny Chris at least. I think B as well on South Africa. Um, thank you again. Our small organization is, is very humbled by the support and love we've received. Until tomorrow, we will be back live. We might be in St. Paul, we might be in Minneapolis, we might be in another spot. We'll try to continue to document what's happening out there. Thank you all. Have a good night. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Drink water. Be good to your loved ones.